foreign currency translations. Now the purposes of this is if you're doing ABC, um, and I know, imagine it, quite a few of you either are doing it or have done it, um, you know that we're trying to combine financial statements of you know, bringing in the subsidiary's financial statements into the group accounts. Now if they're all in Australian dollars, that makes life easy, they're all in the one currency. But if they're foreign subsidiaries, then you've got to convert them into Australian dollars and then bring them in. If they're foreign subsidiaries that use an accounting system other than Australian GAAP, then you've got to convert them, you've got to, do a trans you've got to adjust for all that as well. You've got to change them into an Australian GAAP system and then bring them in. Um, you've got to be careful that the, the dates are as similar as they can be. You try to get them into the same sort of, you know, if they're 30 June here, you try to bring them all into 30 June. If they're not, you try to adjust for that where possible. Sometimes that's not easy. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you've got to do before you even start worrying about consolidation, adjustment entries, and kind of all the various intercompany transactions and so on. But this bit is actually fairly straightforward. So the things that we've got to do are translate it, so basically convert it at some sort of rate. Assets to liabilities, we just simply use the closing rate. So if it's a 30 June year end financial statement, we just look at whatever the exchange rate is at the 30th of June and convert all our assets and liabilities at that rate. If it's income or expenses, so basically profit and loss items, we use the rate on the date of the transaction. And again, that makes sense because assets and liabilities, so your balance sheet, that's a snapshot. That is, the, the balance sheet is at, at a certain date, so at that date, you use the rate at that date. The profit and loss statement is for the year ended, 30th of June 2013, 30th of June 2014. So you try to look at when those things happen. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, hopefully not thinking when's this going to be over, but you're probably sitting there thinking, but how, like for big companies, Woolies puts through a billion dollars worth of sales a week. Now, okay, a lot of that's in Australia, so they don't have to obviously convert that. But I mean, if you were trying to track through every single income and expense item to when it actually happened, that the cost benefit of that is not great. So the standard actually just says, look, if that's a situation and you can, and it's better, and it's and it's a benefit from a cost benefit point of view to use the average rate, just use an average rate. So we'll see how that works in a moment. Of the main accounting elements. What element is missing? Equity. Yeah, equity. So equity is not there. And the reason equity is not there, and I think you can all, hopefully this makes sense. So imagine we are, we have a US subsidiary. Imagine we have a US subsidiary and its balance sheet looks somewhat like that. We've got 200, 200 US dollars of assets, 160 liabilities, 40 equity. Now let's imagine that the exchange rate is one US dollar is equal to two Aussie dollars. So we've absolutely gone through the floor. It's probably not good. Assets are gonna be worth 400. Liabilities are going to be worth 320. So we know that from paragraph 39A, we use the closing rate. Let's assume this is a closing rate, so that's 400. We know that's 320 from paragraph A as well, which means that by construction has to be, yeah, it's got to be 80. So even though we haven't actually provided a definition and, and the rate that we use for equity, we know based on just the mechanics of how that transaction, on, on how the statements are put together, we know equity in total has to equal $80. We don't get guidance about the individual line items in equity, we get choice about how we do that. But ultimately it doesn't matter if you have, you know, if you had sort of share capital and retained earnings, if you made share capital, for example, 70, and that was 10, it could be 60, 20, 50, 30, whatever. As long as those two components are equal to 80, that's, that's, it, has to, it has to be that way. Now the issue is, 
depending on how we make choices about share capital and retained earnings and those other elements, we may not get it equaling to 80. So we may end up with something like this, where share capital is equal to 68 and retained earnings is equal to 10. That's got us at 78. That doesn't balance. And if you have, I'm not going to flip back to the slides, but if you go to the, the last bit of that slide, any exchange difference is recognized in a separate equity account, the FCTR. So the Foreign Currency Translation Reserve picks up that difference. So because that 78 doesn't equal 80, we just add in another account in equity, put $2 in there, and that will make it balance. So in a way, it is just a balancing item. And think about when you have a purchase of a, of a subsidiary and you do it for more than its fair value of its fair value of its identifiable net assets, you create a balancing item called goodwill. This isn't goodwill, but the idea is much the same. It's just a balancing item to make everything work out. And so based on that, we can have a look at the third and last demonstration. And then we can all call it a night. Final push. And I understand if you've already had ABC this week, this is your second night running, um, but let's see how we go. There's only one more, more, only one more day in the, in the work week and given the short weeks we've had previously, you know, I imagine this is a little bit longer than we're used to. So 1st of July 2012, so we've got a company, um, that's when it was acquired. On the 30th of June 2013, we have this information. We have exchange rates at the start of the year and at the end of the year, we have an average rate and we have a rate for when the ending inventory was acquired. So we've just got a bunch of different exchange rates. If you get this in an exam, this is the column that you will get. You obviously won't get this because this is the whole point of doing it. So all that you have to do is basically slot in. So there's two elements to it in, two elements to this. One, slot in the right exchange rate. Once you've got it in, and just make sure you multiply it the right way around. So, and that's, unfortunately when it comes to foreign currency stuff, that's a common mistake that we see. And we don't try to penalize you too much for it, but you, you will obviously get penalized for it. And I hope I haven't done it wrong here. Um, but you just make sure you do the exchange rates around the right way. So if it's one, one US dollar is equal to 97, so that means that for every US, one US dollar, there is fewer Australian dollars, which is what we see here. So I think that looks right. So for sales, we'll use the average rate. Opening inventory, well, the best thing that we've got there is the opening rate. And because we got it, we bought it at the start of the year, that seems to be fair and reasonable. So we use the opening rate. Because again, for the statement of comprehensive income, you try to use the rate at the date of the transaction as much as you can. So that opening inventory happened at the opening rate. Purchases, we're just going to use the average. Um, seems like the most reasonable way to do things. Closing inventory, we got told, happened on that date. Again, you may not get told that information if you don't use ending, but we get told it is here. So that's the inventory one. Admin expense, depreciation expense, tax expense, we all use the average for those. Retained earnings close, sorry, retained earnings open, I should say. The opening rate seems the most reasonable one to use. That is when we bought the company, so you know, that's when we got access to it. Um, so that seems reasonable. So we've given the relevant items an exchange rate. Now we don't give and this is really similar to an extent to, to how you do a consolidation worksheet in, to the extent that when you have an item which some, you know, which is based on other items, so total cost of goods sold is based on this plus this minus this. So you don't have to give this a rate because it's based on what is above. Similarly, you don't do gross profit because that's going to be sales less cost of goods sold. So where there is you know, a totaling item, you don't have to give that a rate. Figure out, the line, figure out the various line items, calculate these. Figure out the various line items, calculate that, and so on until you end up with retained earnings close of $361. So once you've put in the right exchange rates, you've multiplied them across, you've done all the various adding and subtracting down the column, 
you should end up with retained earnings closing of $361. Now for this bit is again, hopefully I've got the exchange rate right, right, around the right way. Assets, liabilities, you just use the closing rate. So it's literally just going, what is, the la what is the rate at the date of the financial statements? And throw that rate in. Multiply it across. So at this point in time, one US dollar is equivalent to 1.09. So the Aussie dollar has weakened against the US. And so one US dollar, so the $912 in cash that is sitting there is equivalent to $997 in cash. And just repeat that process all the way down. You get a certain amount of assets, certain amount of liabilities. So we've got 2744 in assets equals 1745 in liabilities. So assets, liabilities plus equity. We know that. We know that. So these are just in it, and they're not given, but in a sense, they can't be anything else. That means the total of equity has to be $999. Like that's the only thing that it could be. So you know what that's gonna end up at. We then have two line items provided. We've got share capital and we've got retained earnings. We're given no guidance as to how to deal with those. There's no, this is how, how you do it. So in essence, you could actually choose whatever rates you wanted to and put these in whatever rates you wanted to. But it seems reasonable to do something sort of, you know, appropriate with them. Given that you bought the company at the start of the year, that seems reasonable to use the opening rate. It seems reasonable to use the 361 from above and just bring that down. This plus this is 926. So these two together give you 926. What equity in total needs to be is 999. So when we just, whatever method we've used to make, to come up with these numbers, we've ended up with 926. That should be 999. That's the difference of 73. And that item there is just the balancing amount. So it's just whatever we need to put in to make equity equal to $999. If, for example, we got that to 826, that balancing item would be 173. So it's just whatever we need to put in there to make everything work out. Can it be negative? It can be negative. So yeah, if you end up with a situation where it's going negative, you just have a negative number in there, for sure. Um, I mean, retained earnings can be negative. You know, you can, companies can be loss-making, aggregate loss-making over time, and you can have a net, yeah, so yes. Um, so the actual answer, I'll just scribble out the one there. So that is actually 926. That is actually 73. That does all balance to 999, which is what we need to make that all work out. And that is done. <coughs> so what we looked at we just looked at changes in foreign currency rates. If foreign currency rates didn't move, this would be fairly simple to work through. So I mean, it is, there are some issues to deal with. What is important though from this week is it, you need to bed this stuff down because when we look at foreign currency hedging next week, we've kind of got, we have to assume that you know this stuff when we layer in over the top foreign currency hedging, situ hedging positions. So when we start dealing with forward contracts, we start dealing with, with future contracts, that stuff becomes important. We looked at transactions, we looked at translations. Um, got any questions, come up and say hi. Otherwise, have a safe trip home, have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. <laughs>